Anyway, we're going to do this like we always do. How are you doing tonight? Well, I think okay. Uh, <clears throat> I always say as well as I can be expected to at 78 years old, but I, I feel pretty good, and I've already been talking to people today, so uh, i got a lot of things on my mind that we talked about, and so uh, I, 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 you know, the only problem with doing 11 shows is that I forget you know, what, what I've covered before and, and what I haven't covered. And there's so much more than I would like to t talk about, but I don't remember in the last 10 shows what we talked about. And so I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, repeat the same stuff over, but uh, there is so much that we really need to know. And I want people to understand that I am not anti-religious and I'm not anti-Christian. I'm not anti-Jewish. I'm not anti-anything. <clears throat> my, my modus operandi has always been to open your mind, because I've said it before, you know, your mind's like a parachute. It doesn't work if it's not open. And so I've always loved, I have quite literally loved uh, the idea of reading and studying all sorts of arcane subjects, lots of subjects that are really fascinating, incredible subjects that most people have never been introduced to. They don't even know these subjects exist, and and, and religion is one of them. I mean, we all, you know, so many people have a religious belief uh, wherever it is they happen to come from and wherever it is they happen to have been born into, and they have a religious belief. But I, as far back as when I was eight, nine, ten years old, I was questioning the conceptual ideas of God. And, and, and what are you talking about when you talk about God? Define your terms. And so I'm not irreligious, and I'm not anti-Christian, I'm not anti-God. As a matter of fact, I am totally convinced that there is a divine creator. That I, for myself, I'm convinced that there is some kind of of a divine presence in our human civilization <clears throat> that is out there in space. It's out there. Well, that's what you ask any you know little little Christian kid. Uh, do you believe in God? Yeah. Do you know what God is? Oh yeah, yeah. We know exactly what it is. Oh really? What is it? They don't know. <laughs> and then you you know, but then you ask them, well, where does God live? And he, they'll point out in the sky. He lives out there in the sky. Well, what is that out there? Well, that's heaven. So, okay, then I guess God lives in heaven, right? You know, so that's what we call it, the heavens. And then you come to find out that if God lives out there in heaven, then that means he's extraterrestrial. Oh, now let's get into some really dark stuff. Oh, really? God's an extraterrestrial? He's not from Alabama originally. He's not from Tennessee. He's from out there. <clears throat> yeah, well, then... He has angels. Yeah, what are angels? We don't know, but they're angels. <clears throat> so where are they from? Well, they are from heaven, too. The angels are in heaven. And so you point out there. Well, the bottom line is that the whole idea of a creator, God, angels, all is extraterrestrial topics, ETs. And then when you start going back, as we've done on this program, where we go back to Genesis, and in Genesis 1-1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's not what it says in the original text. Go read it from the Hebrew Bible and read it in Hebrew. And it says, in the beginning, the gods, more than one, plural, the gods made the heavens and the earth. Right. And so when God was creating Adam and Eve, no, the gods created Adam and Eve. And that's why in Genesis 1.28, it says, Come, let us make man in our image and our likeness. What do you mean us? Who's us? Well, God is talking to himself. No, the, re the reason why it says, Come, let us. And then in Genesis 2, it talks about that that God came down and saw mankind and what he was doing, what he was involved in. It says, now man has become as one of us, knowing good and evil. Now he's like us. And all those crazy things we do in heaven, all these crazy things that we do in heaven is now the humans that we created to look like us and act like us. They are. 
they're acting just like us. They're fighting wars, and and and, and so the bottom line is, is that the gods created us to look like them. So that's why you read the scripture. God said, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Not make man. Man's already here. But let's make man in our image to look like us and be like us. So therefore, you know, we see in Genesis 1.18, uh, or Genesis 18, you know, where Abraham is approached by three men, and then and the Bible says it was God and two accompanying angels. But they sat on the tree and had dinner with Abraham, and then the two, uh, the two uh, assistants to God got up and went into Sodom and Gomorrah. And so the whole Bible is filled with angels and God that look like us. And so, well, what does that tell you? Well, maybe there might be something to that since it's in the Bible. And if there is something to it, then maybe some of the people you look up to as royalty are actually uh, extraterrestrials who look like you. you. They look human like you. But See, they're you're, you're, reading, you're reading my mind, actually, Jordan, because as I'm listening to you uh, discuss how the allegedly singular God, which, by the way, Elohim indicates immediately this is more than one, uh, right. if you understand it. So, I mean, it's, it's that simple. And in fact, it, it actually describes that there, there's male and female involved there. That's right. Which is That's an right. odd thing. Too. God made man. Uh, in, in his own image, male and female. <laughs> well, but but the interesting thing you bring up with royalty is this: when uh, when they speak, you know, when the the, the blue bloods speak, so to speak, right? Interesting, yep. they call them blue bloods too. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, when the blue bloods speak, they say, "We, we That's are the right. queen. We are." And it's very interesting because there's a whole system to that, and you know the, the the queen actually is in the office of the king at the moment in uh, in in England, right? You know, uh, so she's ruling the country as the king, but yeah, yeah, yeah. through the office, she's the queen certainly. But when she speaks, we are the queen. Yeah, you know what I mean. No, why right. do they do that? Yep, yeah. it's because they believe and they say to us that they have a divine right of kings, a divine right. Well, what do you talk about divine? Divine right, uh, it, you know, it implies that God has anointed me to be king, so I have a divine right from God. Well, which God? Well, we're not going to talk about that. Well, when did God appoint you? Because I know you and I don't like you, and nobody else in town likes you either, so, you know, we know that you're from God. Why? Because you told us. But, uh, but from our viewpoint, you just like just another self-centered, egotistical elite uh, who's riding around in a gold chariot and flipping your cigarettes and doing your drinking and all the other stuff you do, or killing people and wars, and that doesn't sound very divine to us. And so then you find out, no, when they say we, even in the Quran, even in Islam. When God is talking to uh, you know to Muhammad or to any of the other prophets uh, in in the Quran, it says we we made you, we did this and we did that, and God said we came down and we saw you and we came down and did this and that. And there's actually a scripture. And I, I've got it right here, but I gotta find it on my computer. But basically, it says in in the uh, in the Quran, it says we came down and brought you your scriptures. This is in the Quran. We came down and brought you your scriptures, and we will be the protector of your scriptures. We will see to it and protect the scriptures that we brought you. Well, you know, we've been told that, oh, uh, that, that Muhammad wrote this and Muhammad wrote that, and Muhammad did all these wonderful things and all the, the scriptures were given to him uh, and that he wrote them. Then you come to find out, no, Muhammad didn't write nothing. It says, God said, we brought down the Quran and gave it to you. And we will protect it ourselves. It's not your work. We wrote it. And we brought it down to you. Well, who is we? Well, the idea is that every all the ancient peoples of the world knew there is not one main God in the universe. There's plenty of gods. 
But when you hear that the Jews are God's chosen people and the Jews were the first monotheistic God, the first uh, the first monotheistic people were, were the Jewish people. They were the first people to recognize that there was only one God and that one God is their God and is the God of the whole creation of the universe. And, and he loves the Jews and, and Jews were his chosen people and there's only one God in the whole universe, and they are his people, period. So they are the master race, because they have been picked by the almighty God of the universe. But that's not what it says in the scriptures at all. That doesn't make any common sense either. Because in the Ten Commandments, God is giving the Ten Commandments to Moses, and he says one of the first commandments is, the first commandment says, uh, I am the Lord your God. And not, and not, and not the Lord of the whole universe. No, I am the Lord your God. And I shall not have <clears throat> strange gods before me. He didn't say there were no strange gods. He said, no, there's plenty of strange gods. But I don't want any of them before me. Well, this is the same thing a young man says to his fiance. You know, I, there's plenty of other young men out there. But I had better not catch you with them. I am the I'm the one you chose. We've made a deal. We're going steady. We're going to get married. So yeah, there's a lot of other guys out there that are probably better than I am, <clears throat> wealthier than I am. But we have a deal. You picked me, and I picked you, and we have a deal. So I had better not see you with any other guy. Well, that's what the Bible says. God is a jealous God. And he told Israel. I am the Lord, your God. I, I, there are others, but I, you picked me, and I'm the one that agreed to it, so therefore I better not see you having any other gods before me. And so now we find out that the word in the Hebrew is Elohim for God. But in Hebrew, El, e -L is God in Hebrew. But uh, but that in, the, in Genesis 1, 1, it doesn't say in the beginning, El created the heavens and the earth. It says in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Well, Elohim is a plural, like putting an S on the end of the word car. You put an S on it, it becomes cars, more than one. Well, that's what Elohim means. El is God in the plural, more than one. So... Once you understand that, well, where does this God, who is more, uh, you know, this, 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 this God's more than one, where are they? They're out there. Even a child will tell you, gods are out there. <clears throat> and they look like you, because they created you in their image and their likeness, which means so many of the people that are running our planet today, you think are holy and righteous, and Prince Charles and Princess Di and all, and the Queen Mum. And then you find out, no, no, they're a bunch of Nazis, they're a bunch of murderers, and they're not from here. That's why they don't mind killing you, your family, and raping the whole world and stealing everything. And if you get in their way, they'll bomb you and blow you off the, off the face of the earth. Why? Because they're not human. They don't give a damn about you as a human. They have a divine right. Why? Because you don't know who they really are. You don't know what's really going on here. You need to go back and look at the Bible and see what the real name of the tune is, because you're in serious trouble. If you think that there's a God out there who's going to protect you and he loves the children and he loves all the little animals, I said, no, the real story is we are in a universe that's filled with other life forms and they're superior to us and they have come here. And some of them may have already been here before humans were even created. So the bottom line is, when you talk about God, you need to go back and do your homework. The story is not what you think it is. We've been had. Absolutely. And somewhere yeah. along the line, somewhere along the line, the people are going to become face to face with the reality of who we are and how we have been uh, designed by extraterrestrials. And we are now here in their image and their likeness. And so the scripture says, and the idea was expressed by the Knights Templars as above, so below. So all the lunacy you see us humans doing, yeah, well, that's just what the gods are doing. The gods are demons and devils and angels and, uh, and poltergeists, jesters and jokers who lied to us. 
spirits that lie and tell us about God, and they they themselves are extraterrestrials from out of from out there in the universe who have come here. So the whole idea now is you need to go back and look at religion and where did it come from and what in the world is actually in fact happening. You don't have to look at the real facts right now. It's going to show itself real soon. Oh, yes, absolutely true. You know, Jordan, a couple of things come to mind here. First of all, uh, we did get a question in already, and I didn't even tell people they could ask questions. But if you're in the live chat room or you're on my Skype list, uh, by all means, uh, enter a question that is reasonable to what we're discussing. Jordan is more than happy to address them, whatever they may be. Uh, so, yeah, live chat room or if you're on Skype, Charles Ocelli is my Skype name and I will read them and interpret what it is you're asking. Uh, no problem. I will add anything to the conversation that is reasonable. OK, that's the first thing. Second thing, you know, I, I used to think now now you, you, you might find this strange, but I, I used to think that David Icke was absolutely laughable with this concept of reptilians being on the planet, this kind of thing. But you yeah. know what kept happening to me, Jordan? I kept having a hard time figuring mm-hmm. out how a human being can do what some alleged human beings do to yeah. other human beings. Yeah. And and I said to myself, you know, hey, look, you, you know, when they say to you, well, look, you see a conspiracy, you see the, you know, thousands, millions, whatever. How many are mm-hmm. being murdered? How can somebody possibly do that? I mean, they must be mentally sick. They must be mentally ill. They must yeah. be. You know, and and mental illness doesn't account for it because mental illness, eventually they collapse into something. They they yeah. crash. But these people that do it for decades, for 50, 60, 70 years yep, of their, right. you know, of their, their time and power, I, I would say to myself, they're not mentally ill. They might be mentally ill toward the end. You know, some people go a little fuzzy toward the end of their lives or maybe they had trouble in their youth. But the majority of the time they're there literally yep. poisoning and slaughtering and setting things into motion that are absolutely harmful and horrific. They're not yep. mentally ill. So I say to myself, well, what, what is the other answer here? This is almost like an inhuman. And I just kept coming up against the same wall. This is not yep. what a human being would do if they had an ounce of an idea, the damage they were doing. See, a human being has empathy built in unless there's a damage. They have empathy built in. They can't possibly Rest well with this. Be happy with this. Be thrilled with the spoils of war since they know it costs 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 lives. Yep, yep, yep. And, 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 and I started saying, no, I'm not saying I'm a devotee of, of David Icke's. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is not so crazy to say that some of these creatures that appear human might be something else. Because right. if it just appears right. that way. I mean, it just, just following the logic and the reality of their behavior, Jordan. That's the first thing. So so I agree with you. And, and a lot of people say, oh, it's crazy talk. God is an extraterrestrial. Well, first of all, in a practical sense, if you're telling me that God doesn't necessarily reside on this planet, by definition, he's an extraterrestrial. OK, God is in heaven. God is everywhere. OK, I get that. And that is a wonderful thing because that's the idea that all of his creations are all his and so on and so forth. And I don't even mean to give the masculine to it. It's just a matter of. That's what I've commonly thought to say first. I understand all that. Um, the, the first curveball comes from a question, <laughs> yeah, which okay. I don't think I've ever heard you address this. But, you know, the Mormons, they talk about aliens, basically, intermingled with God. And yeah. that part of it makes sense. Now, was Joseph Smith uh, a con man? Uh, I, I, I think so. But. Did he have some of the truth? Maybe. <laughs> you know, well, a good con man doesn't sell you the whole complete full lie, do they? No, no not at all. Not at all. But, and, but I'd love to know your 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 look on that, because, you know, Mormonism to me, when I was a kid, I thought it was just another form of Christianity. Yeah. And it's really not. It, 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 I mean, Jesus is in there, <laughs> yeah. but but it's not. Really. So I was wondering if you had thoughts on on Mormonism, because in some ways it actually comes to more of the truth. And in some ways it gets really strange. Um, But then it's only it's only when you when you study the occult world of theology and, and metaphysics 
and understand uh, what you're seeing if you have a, an, a what is called a preternatural experience. Preternatural used to be called supernatural, but it's not supernatural because supernatural means it's natural, but it's really just natural. That's why it's supernatural. No, the word is preternatural means not of this world things that you uh, that has nothing to do with the world you live in this is not from here from this earth it's not from this planet it has to do with something that's out there or something that's in this earth or something that has nothing to do with your human life it's preternatural and so once you understand preternatural and what it means and then you start looking at all the stories coming out of the ancient world, not just the Bible and the, and the, and the Bhagavad Gita and the Vedas and Panishads and, and the Quran and, and the Torah and all the other holy writings, uh, you begin to see that there's a whole world of ancient knowledge and history that we are not privy to know about. And now you begin to see the real story is beginning to develop, that we were nothing more than created creatures and we were probably recreated that's why the bible says in genesis come let us make man in our image after our likeness meaning and implying man is already here he's already here but he's not that pretty for, for, for being a creature walking upright uh, and so science today calls those creatures we know that they existed and we call them hominids look up the word hominid and it will show you apes that look like us they walk upright they are built <clears throat> like us they're ugly as as, as a homemade sin but they're ugly but they walk upright and they're full of hair and they and they will look like a you know a human monkey but the scientists say they really existed because we have the skeletal remains and science calls them hominids well somebody must have come here millions of years or thousands of years or whatever it was a long time ago and and encountered when they came here to this earth they encountered living creatures on this earth that had evolved or somehow it got here and there's a lot of them and so somebody that came here from another world said look come let us make this creature to look like us why don't we intervene in this uh, dna structure and let's uh, co co-produce with uh, with this with this female let us take her and artificially uh, 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 create uh, uh, another life form in her and let's let's cross genetics and let's see what she gives birth to that's fine. That's fun. Let's see what she gives birth to. If we uh, if we put the seed of life into her, and so we've come from another world out there that you don't know anything about, but we come here and we see these uh, uh, these uh, hobbited creatures. We call them Neanderthals and Cro Magnon man and all these ancient peoples that we loosely think of as cavemen or whatever. And so these extraterrestrials who came here decided, let's make them look like us because they seem to be able to procreate. So let's let's uh, take one of the females and artificially cross breed with her. Let's see what she gives birth. What, what she gave birth to, uh, it probably wasn't exactly what they what the extraterrestrials were thinking. So let's do it again. Maybe we put too much of this and not enough of that. We did it a little bit wrong because we're just experimenting. So let's do it again. And this time we'll, we'll put more of this and a little bit less to that. And now let's see what, what she comes up with. And so this is why I'm saying it's very possible, uh, and I'm not the only one saying this, but it's very possible that that's when we get Bigfoot, the Yeti, the, the gorilla-like man who walks upright and has a family, has females and has children but he's a lot stronger bigger and scarier than we are well that's what maybe the neanderthal creatures may have looked like but when the angels or the, the extraterrestrials crossbred with those uh, hominid creatures they gave birth to something which is half half uh, neanderthal half uh, indigenous creatures and half angels so that these um, the, these Bigfoots and these animals are brilliant. They're smart. They can disappear in front of you. They can reappear. 
Nobody wants to deal with them. They're frightening. Uh, they're, they're scary. It very well might be that they were some of the first of the crop to be turned out, you know, that turned out uh, with the crossbreeding of, of a Neanderthal with the gods who came from another world. And then they kept, they kept refining themselves, obviously, until one day they gave birth to us. Now, we are totally different from the Neanderthal and from the ancient, uh, what we call twel- uh, you know, the, the cave dwellers or whatever. We writing beautiful music, making movies, motion pictures, going and flying jets and creating lasers and uh, you know, we're just a magnificent creation of wisdom and knowledge, but we're still a bunch of animals. We're still out there fighting in the streets and and killing each other and warring with each other. But we also have a divine spark in the human family, in the human race, that we can create gorgeous, beautiful art and, and write, uh, you know, the beautiful music and create lasers and all kinds of wonderful things that we could do. We could build Disneyland and all kinds of great stuff that shows that we are brilliant, brilliant creatures. And who put all of this incredible knowledge into our heads? Uh, maybe it was because the, the, the extraterrestrials crossbred again and again and again until they finally got it right. And now they finally got it right. Now we look exactly like them. And that's why the Bible says man has become as one of us. Now look at him. Now he can he can do whatever he wants to do. He can create rockets and put on their atomic bombs and come out to space. So look what we have done. We've created a, a, a monster. We've created something that we're going to have to deal with because he is smart. He's intelligent. He's got nuclear, uh, you know, nuclear weapons, and he and he can fly into space. So we've got some serious problems. We we, we should have left this whole thing alone a long time ago, but it's too late now because he's reproducing himself, and they're getting smarter as they go. And so that's why I think that uh, we are dealing right now, and I'm totally sure that, that there are reptilian aliens here because I've heard I'm the one, probably the first person who talked to David Icke about reptilians because I brought David Icke to America when he wasn't even known here. Nobody had never heard of him, but I brought him here back in 1992. And I was in San Diego, and, and, and I was running a company, working for a company where I had access to money, and and, uh, and the company was a, uh, a publishing outfit. So I, I've helped a lot of people that are very famous today, but I helped make them famous. And so I talked with uh, was uh, with uh, David Icke about reptilians and reptile aliens who uh, look, you know, but today they they are shape shifters. Uh, and they can sh- they can look like you very quickly, <clears throat> or they can look like what they really look like where they came from, which were reptile aliens. And so I've you know, I've been talking about this stuff for many years. Well, I'm I have got some circumstantial evidence about the reptilian presence on the earth that's pretty overwhelming. Uh, incredible stuff, and I'll send you some of the uh, audio video files. And my well, my website, I mean, and my uh, my uh, hard drive that I have captured because I, I when I first saw them, it was so breathtaking. I thought I need to copy this because nobody's going to believe it. No one's going to believe what I what is on this web back in 1999 and 2000. <clears throat> so I'll send you some of the stuff I say. One of them will knock your knock your socks off. There's a, uh, a, a 60 minutes interview with Prince Charles, and uh, and and um, and Prince Charles is walking in this big garden, beautiful garden, with this uh, with this uh, host uh, questioning him from 60 minutes, and then they sat down together on this on this uh, on this like a bus bench kind of thing in the garden. And they're talking, well, the 60 Minutes reporter asked Prince Charles something he didn't like. Uh, they pried into some personal something that Prince Charles was not happy about. And instead of, uh, you know, registering, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 an expression that he wasn't happy with that question, 
Prince Charles actually they looked and it's on you see this they had the camera on Prince Charles looked at this uh, host and started hissing and his eyes became like a, a like a, 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 a snake but he was hissing and hissing loud at him and, and and it was incredible nobody could believe this Prince Charles hissing like a snake and it wasn't just a little flippant sign. No, he's actually looking at him and hissing at him like a snake. Well, if you go on the web today and go to YouTube and type in uh, 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 people hissing, just type in the people hissing and you will see uh, all kinds of, of videos of talk show hosts or, or game show hosts or or interviews, or news interviews, where individuals will hear something they don't want to hear, and they start hissing like a snake. So I'm saying to myself, why are these humans that look human, but they turn and, and act like a snake? The way they turn their neck and their eyes you know, gets you know, they get they get this look in their eye like an animal, and then they start hissing. What is that all about? Well, you better go back and look at it because that's what happens, and it's on film. And when David Icke talks about the extraterrestrials who look like uh, who are who are a reptilian, I was the I was probably the one who got him started on that back in 1962 when I first brought him here, because I have talked to some of the most incredibly uh, brilliant people in my life, people I know that are extraordinarily successful, important people in this world, and they have told me about their own personal one-on-one -on -one experience with hissing reptiles. They look like reptilians, they, they, they move like reptilians, and they would hiss. And so uh, it, it's just a, astounding. And then when I go back to the Jewish Torgrams, which is the old, uh, they're called the, the Jewish Torgrams, or the old records, of what the rabbis centuries and centuries ago had to say on different subjects. It's like uh, the, uh, like in American law. You've got all, all of our laws go back to the 1700s. <clears throat> and so when the judge says he's going to render an opinion, that means an opinion based on everything we know about this particular law. And it goes back 400 years or 300 years. And so... Uh, there is a, uh, it's called Jewish Torgrams, what the old rabbis hundreds of years had to say about certain subjects. And, and when talking about Adam and Eve, there's about three or four documents, and I can send, I'll, I'll email you the documents, you, you read them yourself, where these old rabbis 500 years ago, 400 years ago, talked about when Adam was created, he had scaly skin, like a snake. And that, that he had to uh, go undergo some kind of a of a of a, uh, a, a different kind of uh, uh, operation or what am I trying to say reincarnation or something. And they said then he lost his scaly skin and began to take on what we today refer to as human. But when he was here, he, he had a reptile head and he had, he had scaly skin like a reptile. I didn't say that. The rabbis wrote that. The rabbinical authorities 400, 500, 600 years ago talked about Adam uh, having scaly skin like a reptile. So I'm thinking, well, what is that? What are they talking about? Well, they're not stupid, and they must have had a reason for saying that. So you better go back and look at this whole subject of who was this new creature they call Adam, A-D-L. We call it Adam. No, and go back in the Hebrew Bible and look where it says that God created Adam, A-D-L. We're the ones that make it, put another A and make it Adam. No, it's not Adam. Adam. And then you find out what the word Adam means in the ancient Hebrew. So <clears throat> I'm just saying that if you really want to talk about theology, then go do your homework. Spend 60 years looking at the words, the terms, the etymologies, the stories cross-referencing the stories with other ancient civilizations and you will find out the whole of what we call the religious world 
has been telling you something and you don't have sense enough to even know how far back it goes. The concepts and the ideas that we're expressing today have been around for tens of thousands of years, but you don't know what they mean. You don't know what the etymology of the words mean. So what the Bible is telling you is totally, totally different than anything you're being told today in a synagogue. Anything you're being told today in a mosque, a church, or a synagogue, you have no idea in the world how distorted that stuff really is. And I've said this before on the program, but right now it's, a, it's, it's also important to add that all three of the major religions today, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all come from the Hindu. Hindu India is the birthplace of all three major religions today. But happily, it's been so well hidden that there's only a handful of people who have done this kind of research and see it. Definitely, Judaism is a Hindu religion. Christianity is directly out of the Hindu. And, and now that's a whole subject. You know, we talked about what well, we could talk about it again later. But yeah, I'm just sure. I, listen, I want to get into that some more. But uh, but quite honestly, I have another thought in my mind here. I want to get to since we've uh, gone into Genesis quite a bit here yeah. today. Uh, when I <clears throat> attempt to read uh, from the Hebrew, okay, I'm not a, I'm I'm not somebody who speaks it or normally reads it. I'm sitting there with a you know with a concordance, a translator, yeah. okay. Um, but when I take a look at it, not only is there this concept of – you mentioned the reformation of man, not mm -hmm. the invention of man, you know, because mo most people, they, they hear that story and it's sort of like, well, from the dirt, yeah, he makes a man. Okay, yep. uh, that's incorrect. But what is interesting about the dirt here is that the way that I read it – now, maybe I'm wrong, but the way I read it is that uh, the earth – is also being reformed yes not correct. snapped into Absolutely. existence it's it's being you know creating the firmaments and the water and all that this is the reorganization of something that was already there it's not the creation of the entire planet is it that's right it's it's a recreation of this entire planet and all life on it and that's what this whole thing is all about somebody has come back and they're recreating all over again. And now they're coming back the way they must have come here millions of years ago or whatever it was when they, when these extraterrestrials came here and they saw the indigenous creatures that we today scientists call hominids. Uh, we, we think of them as cavemen, you know, but, uh, but the, whatever they were, they were not like us, and so these these creatures came from other worlds. They came from out there, from heaven, and and they and they said, "Come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness." Well, that's what's happening today. There's a there seems to be a new evolution uh, idea now being put forth because mankind has become so uh, large, uh, so many humans. And it's totally out of control. I mean, at least 95% of the earth are, are so ignorant, they don't even know they're alive. They just reproduce and eat and reproduce and eat until they, they, there's just millions and millions of them. And collectively, uh, they got an IQ of 40. They just keep reproducing and, and drinking their beer and entertaining themselves with bullfights and guns and and ball games, they just keep reproducing and reproducing. And so whoever is in charge of this world, the gods, are obviously looking at us and saying, you know, we got to do something to clean this thing up. They're destroying the earth. They're destroying the water and their air and their food. Uh, we got to do something to change this whole superstructure of what we call life on the earth because these people are crazy. Damn, they are, they are ignorant and ill-informed and can't read. But they know how to reproduce. They got 14 kids, and, and the woman's got 14 kids, and she's pregnant and got no husband. And so they, you just keep reproducing these people by the millions, and those people have babies, and they reproduce. And, the, and, and so finally you end up with a situation where you've got billions of people who their parents didn't know how to read, the billions of people, the parents didn't know anything. They don't know nothing. They just were born and, 
do the best they can and raise the family because that's what all the animals do. And so today, now you still are looking at billions of people are reproducing and reproducing and reproducing. And of course, we have to, uh, you know, because we America is looked to as a great, wonderful country. And so we want to feed the poor. We want to feed the poor children and poor all the poor. But you're so incredibly ill-informed. The, the poor are reproducing themselves uh, existentially. It's just, you know, you've got 8 million and they have illegitimate kids, 10 apiece, and now there's 80 million. And those 80 million reproduces again. And now you got 160 million. And then you just keep doing that until finally you got 8 billion people. And those 8 billion people, you know, the seven and three quarter billion are going to reproduce themselves again. And, and now you're going to have 28 billion people. And then they're going to reproduce themselves and make it 160 billion people. And why? All of them collectively have got an IQ of 40. Nobody's thinking. Nobody's looking what the future is. We've got, you know, we, we're running out of air. We're running out of, of, of clean water. We're running out of food. And what bothers me is that so many people are having babies that never, th- and the end, I'm trying to tell you what I see in this world. People that are having children and babies now are thinking this, that, that the way we live today is the way humans in America have lived for tens of thousands of years. We've always, for tens of thousands of years, we've always had 7-Eleven and the big grocery stores and the big supermarkets and all the liquor stores. And, and we've always had Pop TV and, and, and Beavis and Butthead and the ball games. We've always lived this way for thousands and thousands of years because that's the way life on the earth is. And I'm saying, no, air ahead, you better go back and do some research and find out we haven't lived this well in tens of thousands of years. And we are now so big and so overweight and so overwhelmed. And the people are just reproducing babies and we're supposed to feed the babies of the world. And so what you're doing is you just keep feeding the babies and they grow up and they have more babies. And now it's 7 billion. And now you know, a couple of years, there'll be another 10 billion. And we just keep trying to feed the babies and feed all the poor folks. All they're doing, the poor folks, are just reproducing themselves and reproducing and watching TV and drinking their beer and going to the ball game. They don't give a damn about the future. They don't read. They don't know anything. They don't understand anything. But they do know how to reproduce. And so I'm saying that one day soon, the world of mankind is going to wake up to the overwhelmingly obvious fact that the gods have come back and they're going to do something about thinning the crowd. They're going to do something to thin us because we're out of control. We don't know how to stop. So we just continue to do what we've always done, have babies. And it's the most clever thing in the world is sex. Hey, let's have babies. And then we've got so many babies, so many hundreds of millions, that we you know, we can either throw them away or, or throw them out in the street and let them live on drugs or let them get into a gangs and the gangs are growing bigger because they're taking in more and more children and babies and they're selling drugs and they're, you know, the, the situation is out of control. And that's what this official with NASA, this German guy, that looked, that looked and sounded like he came out of Nazi Germany. He was an official at, at NASA, and he was being interviewed about the, what's coming in NASA. And he said, we are preparing to leave this earth forever. This is what NASA is all about. Well, of course. NASA is made up of all the old Nazis under Adolf Hitler. NASA is an old Nazi boy network. And they were building rockets in Germany. Now they're building rockets in America. And and, and NASA is nothing more than a Nazi operation, period. But he said, as a, and he was from Germany, and you could tell with his, his mannerisms and his demeanor, he was a Nazi. But he said, We are getting ready to leave this planet. Why? Because you have no idea 
get in the world how bad off this earth really is. You're expecting to have your billions and billions of babies and there'll always be a grocery store and cold water and you'll have plenty to eat and, and, and baby diapers and all that, but you have no idea in the world what we are facing on this earth. Billions of people collectively are having children and they have no idea and they don't really care about what's coming to the earth. And we know that something bad is coming to the human civilization. We are getting bigger and bigger and more and more people. And the bigger we get, the less we know. So that there's a handful of people on the earth we call Illuminati, which are the masters of wisdom and the masters of science. While the billions of people, all they know how to do is sit back and have babies and drink beer and watch a ball game. And See, somewhere along the line, the end is coming, and the the the, in, the individual creatures who created us to look like them, they're watching us. And I'm telling you, there's something coming on this earth, and it's going to be horrible when the ordinary people of the world wake up, and there's no longer any food. Now, what food there is, you got to fight 14,000 people in your town to get that food. And God knows if they find out you've got the food, they're starving. They're going to come to your house looking for food. And if there's nothing there, they might eat you. And so I'm just saying that if you, if you want to look at the world the way it really is, and you're going to have to look at it soon, you're going to look at it soon, whether you like it or not. And when you do, and you're going to find out that the people who are running this planet today are not from here. They don't care about this human race. They don't care about you. Go out and have all the babies you want and drink all the beer. We give you a liquor store in every corner. So go out and have yourself a couple of drinks and go watch your ball game because we'll get rid of you real soon anyway. Mm -hmm. We've had enough of your pull. Right. You know, and, and so, look, I'm going to kick I'm going to kick a challenge that is being made to me, but I'm going to kick it out as a question to Jordan here. Uh, because, and, and let me just set this up for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. Jacques Fresco, you've heard of him, I'm sure? Uh, Jacques Fresco? Fresco. Uh, I think I have, yeah, but I don't remember why. Uh, okay, so he's uh, the guy who's... I this. have heard, yeah, I have heard that name, but I don't re recall why right now. Sure, well, he's the inspiration behind the Venus Project, um, you know, which uh, which has this concept about a way that societies could be managed in well order. look at that that all goes back to what i did uh that is all based on my work right it's based it's based on something called the zeitgeist movement right exactly okay well, the no, well that's that's why i'm going that's why i'm going into this but here's the question because of what what fresco does which yeah. is a, a little bit different and, and he was included in those movies and all that as well um but uh, the thing is this, if those in power were to choose to make a situation that was not in this condition as it is, okay, where you have, uh, yeah, there, there's plenty of people that are easily controlled because they're poor and they don't know anything and they don't have any resources, but there are ways <clears throat> that this could be reimagined, right, so that Truthfully, there are enough resources on the planet right now, at least. I mean, exponentially, no. I mean, eventually everything runs out. But on the planet at the moment, there would be a way so that there would not have to be the shortage of resources. Um, in other words, it is really scarcity, which yeah, is the yeah. currency of a lot of things. And it doesn't matter if it's money or if it's food or if it's housing or if it's decent water. It is through the scarcity of these things that you create these paradigms, right? Of course, yes. That's called politics. There's a science to it. Oh, it's called political science. Absolutely. Why? Because there is a science to ca causing people to starve so that they will do what you tell them to do. That's right. And, and, and you can use them politically because when they're broke and starving, they'll do whatever you tell them as long as they can get something to eat. Even if it's something that's dead meat that's been out in the garbage for two weeks, people will eat because they are hungry. And so you can man manipulate them and exploit them and trick them and deceive them. And so, yeah, I understand. I understand what's going on. But it's, it, but the implications are one day this stuff is going to come home. And when it does, the whole world is going to finally wake up 
And when they do and they see what's been done to them and what their world has become like now with no fresh water, no food, and what little food there is, the whole town is going to be looking for it. So don't you go out and look to to find food for your family because there's going to be 50,000 other people out there in the street looking for food. <clears throat> and if you have electric lights, uh, you better put a curtain or something over your window because if they find that you've got electricity, they're coming to raid your refrigerator and your freezer, and there's going to be, you know, we've got movies made off of this. You know, we've got television and shows and movies have been telling you this for years. So, yeah, scarcity can be used politically. But like you said, eventually, down the road, there's going to come a day, and I got a feeling it's a lot closer than maybe you think. But myself, I think the eventuality is coming very soon. Well, we're going to wake up and find out we have raped this earth incredibly bad. We have destroyed our our earth and our, and our land. We've, uh, we've flooded it with oil and flooded our oceans with oil and we've flooded our countries with criminals and lies and deception and alcohol and drugs. and Something's got to be done to save the human family if the ones who created us want to save us. Because we can't do it. We humans cannot save ourselves. You know, we're the only creatures on the earth where we're born we are helpless all the other animals that are born you know two minutes after they're born they're on their feet and they know what to do and they know how to follow their parents and they grow quickly uh and they don't and you know they're they already know what they need to do and how they do it they just were born an hour ago but well humans you have to wait you know for 15 years till they finally wake up and know how to take care of themselves so <clears throat> I'm just saying I'm afraid for the future because people today have no power to change anything. They have no power. They may Some may be smart enough to see what's coming and, and want to think about it and what to do, but we don't have any power. Why? Because knowledge is power, and we don't have any real, legitimate, de jure, provable knowledge. Knowledge has been kept from us, and instead of giving us wisdom and knowledge and, and wisdom to, to work with to build a better world, we're giving Bugs Bunny and Donald Duck and, and baseball games and football games and sitcoms and all kinds of childish ball games and childish uh, you know, tripe on television and entertainment, and, and it's just amazing how the human family has been so misled and a handful of people uh you know i know because i'm one of them i've been trying for some 59 years to wake people up to the reality the harsh reality we live in and all i've ever gotten was mockery and, and, and robbery and people laughing at me and mocking me and stealing everything i have and and, and thinking I'm working for the government, or I'm working for the devil, or, you know, I've been called every name you can think of. So I just do what I do because I learned a long time ago to look at reality and figure it out what's coming. If you know, if you know where you've come from in history and you know what's going on now, well, now at least you got two points, uh, you know, two stars and two points. So draw a straight line through those two points and now you can see where you're going so you know where you've been where you are now and now we can see where you're going so that's what i'm trying to do i'm not anti-god not anti-anything but i do want to try and help people to wake up to the reality of the world we live in <clears throat> that's what i try and do well, and that is what you are doing and have been doing and continue to do. We're going to take a break right now, but uh, JordanMaxwellShow.com is Jordan Maxwell's website. And uh, this, again, is the 11th episode in this string, uh, this series on religion. You know, a string of, of shows or a series of episodes. I don't know what's the best way to describe it. It doesn't matter. We have Jordan Maxwell with us, and we are getting into things. Of course, you want to go to me first. Go to jordanmaxwellshow.com altogether. jordanmaxwellshow.com. That's the only website. And it is a Monday. We are continuing our series with 
Jordan Maxwell, who I do take seriously. I don't take myself very seriously, but Jordan Maxwell I take very seriously, and I'm extremely grateful to have him on for this series of discussions that we've had related to religion, not related to, actually focused on religion. Uh, we, we Some other related topics have come up. Of course, you guys can enter questions into the conversation as we go through my Skype. Charles.Ocelli is my Skype. And if not there, you can go to the live chat room at Ocelli.com and you can put your questions in there. I will enter them into the discussion. Meanwhile, if you want to get deeper into this subject and many others, you go to Jordan Maxwell Show. Dot com altogether jordan maxwell show.com it is the only website that is jordan maxwell's you can make a donation there you can join the research society there and get way deeper into these topics and many others you can also go there and purchase on demand videos things like that and hey while you're there you can always email jordan he's always happy to uh receive correspondence uh your thoughts on the shows whatever this kind of thing of course uh as I said, everything helps when it comes to donations and things. I'm at a point uh, this month where I, I, I could use some myself, but uh, Jordan is always uh, always in that kind of condition because I got to tell you something: telling the truth just doesn't pay that well. Uh, so it's that simple. Um, anyway, Jordan Maxwell Show dot com. That's your starting point. It's the only website that is Jordan's, and that's where you go to get access to all of that. The Research Society button is there, and uh, the, the the links and clickable goodies are all over the website, so you can email Jordan, donate, uh, check out you know previous shows. Not sure if my shows are up there on the site or not, but I do know that uh, there's other shows that Jordan has done with other people on there that are accessible right away, and a whole lot more stuff is accessible when you join the Research Society. So all of that out of the way. I'd like to continue on with the discussion, Jordan. And, you know, when we took the break, we were talking about this exponential, you know, in the movie The Matrix, right? Uh, Agent Smith turns around and says to Neo, you're, you're actually more like a virus with the way you're spreading around the world. You're not really carnivores. You're not really, you know, uh, uh, you're, you're not really mammals. You're, you're, you're more like a virus. And Jordan was talking about this exponential spreading of humanity. But. It's not that the reproduction or, 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 you know, procreation is a negative. And it's not like religion is a negative. Let's clear that up one more time. No, no, absolutely. I agree with you. It's not a negative. Yeah. It can be made into a negative if you're ignorant, ill-informed, and unread. See, that's what the trouble is. When you allow people to put a facade over something, <laughs> right, and present, yeah. you know, kind of beat you with a stick, but it's a padded stick. You know, it's it's still a stick. Uh, you just don't know what the stick is made of. OK. That's right. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's really, really rough to, uh, to, to 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 deal with this and to kind of deprogram what you've always been taught. I often wind up referring back to things that I always was sort of taught to be the, you know, the ground level of truth. And. The fact is that um, the generations that came before me didn't really know any better than me. So uh, you got to you got to actually dig deeper to get at it because nobody's going to hand it to you easily. Are they, Jordan? No. And besides, uh, people don't realize that what they're reading in their holy books, the Bible, and the Quran and, and the and the Torah and, and the, the book of the law and all of that, they don't realize that these are stories that have been around for thousands of years in other cultures. They just were told in a different way. Uh, you know, in a classic example, uh, when you read in the Bible about Moses, and Moses, uh, when he was leading the people in the desert, uh, he didn't know where he was going, and so he was out there for 40 years. Well, that's very a suspect anyway, because 40 shows up in the Bible, Old Testament, all the time. 40 this, 40 that. And so Moses is out in the wilderness for 40 years, and the Israelites are following him because he don't know where he's going. He's in the wilderness. And so, uh, but there's no way for him to uh, order food for everybody. And But you better find some food for everybody because you got you know, you got a lot of people out there, uh, thousands if not millions of people following you and they're in the desert and they're in the and the in the lost desert too with you 
and you're the one that brought him out there because you told him God was going to take care of him. Well, where is he? We're hungry, right? And go. so then we see that in the Bible that Moses talks to God and God and tells him, God, you know, you have to do something for me here. And it's, it is something important. Can you do something to help feed my people here? Because we don't have nothing. We're out in the middle of a desert. We don't even know where we are. Can you do something to feed us? Because if not, we're going to die. So we may be God's chosen people, but we're not going to be here much longer because we're not eating. And then it says, God says to Moses, oh, okay, I'll feed you. I'll uh, you know, tell everybody to settle down. And I will feed you. What I'll do is I will give you something that is called the manna from heaven. And so the manna from heaven began to, the scripture says, the people would wake up in the morning and they would have something called the manna from heaven. And they would go out and gather up this mountain from heaven and eat it. And at least they had at least they had breakfast, they had lunch and dinner based on this mana from heaven. Well, the very word mana, you know, we've heard the story about the mana from heaven, and the, and the Jews are out on and the Hebrews or whoever they are, the Hebrews and the Jewish, they are out there in Israel. They're out there picking up the mana from heaven. Well, the first of all, the word mana simply means in the old ancient Phoenician language, which we call Hebrew, it's actually a Phoenician language, and mana in the old Phoenician language simply means what is it? They don't even know what it is. They're just out there eating something, and it's good. They're eating it, but uh, but they don't know what it is. They have no idea how it got there, but thank God at least it's something to eat. And so they call it mana, which means what is it? And so then you find out, you go back into the 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 the, uh, the history and go back to the Jewish Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Judica, and the Jewish reference works on the Jewish religion. And then you look at the, uh, the what they call archaeolinguistics, archeo which is the study of the ancient languages of the world and how they're all connected behind the scenes. And when you hit archaeolinguistics and, and you ask, what does archaeolinguistics, the study of ancient languages, tell you about the word mana? Uh, because obviously in the Bible, the Hebrews didn't know what it was. That's why they called it mana. And then you find out in the history, in the reference books on the word, mana from heaven was mushrooms. They were eating mushrooms, the magic mushroom. Well, no wonder they were talking to God. Now, hell, if you're out there eating the magic mushrooms, <laughs> you're going to be talking to God. You're going to have all kinds of wonderful experiences uh, communicating with your God on mushrooms. And so, mana from heaven uh, is described in the Bible. Go to the Bible and read in Genesis uh, about, no, read in the, in the, New, the Old Testament uh, about manna from heaven. Look, to, look it up in the Bible where the scriptures are talking about the manna from heaven, and it will tell you in the reference works, manna from heaven were mushrooms, and they were called the magic mushrooms. And, 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 and magic mushrooms have been around the Middle East by God for thousands of years. But it actually says they were small, round things that grew in the morning dew. So when you get up in the morning, there will be these fluffy, round uh, things that you could pick and eat, and they were called mushrooms. And so now there are, uh, today, there are quite a few articles being written in Israel by uh, Israeli professors and, and, and people who study the Israeli history of words, etc., in the Hebrew and there are many articles being written now. You go on the web and, and just look up uh, uh, Israel and mushrooms and see all the different articles written by professors and teachers and writers and researchers in Israel uh, saying that, yeah, the people supposedly at that time that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Moses would have been alive, uh, they were on mushrooms. And that's why, you know, they were seeing and able to talk to God directly. Well, yeah, if you take enough mushrooms, you're going to talk to God. And so, but it's not mushrooms just for, you know, like you would get with a hamburger. No, no, these were magic mushrooms. Uh, and uh, you know, what is it? Amandita Moscara, 
is probably one of the most famous mushrooms in the world is Amanita Muscara. And it's, that's a one incredible trip. Boy, you take a little bit of, of the, of the mushroom of the Amanita Muscara and watch what happens to your brain. Watch what happens to your mind when your mind starts reacting to the chemicals in that, in that mushroom. You're going to see things you are not going to believe. Oh, and, and you're going to have experiences, uh, boy. So, I'm, so, I'm, I'm acutely aware of this, Jordan. Uh, I, I, I've sampled that one. I've sampled psilocybin. I have also uh, <clears throat> sat down with people that uh, used to be called Indians. Uh, you know, at, at the time I sat down with them, but now they call them Native Americans, uh, quite honestly, and, and had uh, uh, peyote. So guess what? <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. Um, <laughs> and look, I... I I, I, I do not deny the legitimacy of those experiences or tell you that it's not something that doesn't irrevocably alter your state because it does. Um, yep. Now, what's interesting to me is that uh, according to what, what they describe as ancient witches script, mana, M-A-N-A, would be the pronunciation of energy from the land and its physical manifestation is mushrooms. Yeah. So, you know, not everybody is lying to you. <laughs> Just so you guys know this, it, it's interesting stuff when you take a look at it. it when, when you look at the confluence of the ancient uh, uh, languages, that is That's one what interesting I said. point It's called well. archaeolinguistics, the ancient languages of the world. Right. And you put all of them together, you start to line them up, they do start to make sense as mm -hmm. to how, you know, things came together. I have yep. uh, an interesting question here, and it's actually a little bit out off topic, but I, I did say if it's relevant, we'll bring it up, okay? Yeah. Um, okay. So this person is asking, wow, you know, what is, uh, let me just get their exact question. Uh, okay, can you ask Jordan why, okay, why Satanism as a religion is so popular? The highest levels of world with the highest levels of world leaders. Excuse me. Um, before Jordan answers that, let me just explain something though. Um, what some people call Satanism is not Satanism. Um, so I don't know if you mean the religion by which you basically are your own god, or if you mean the actual worship of the character of Satan, because both things exist. Um, so that would be what I would say if I were answering the question. Now, Jordan might have a different view and might want to answer it differently. Go ahead, though. Well, I would say that, uh, that you're right, that there are different interpretations of what we would call Satanism. Uh, there are different interpretations, and you, and you outlined it, and I, you're right. Um, but there does seem to be a general overall direction in which the human family is slowly but surely uh, becoming uh, uh, involved with, and that is other world <clears throat> entities and, and, and uh, demonism and devil worship. But, uh, but over that, there does seem, as I said, to be some kind of a direction that the human family on the earth is now being directed into with all kinds of rituals and blood sacrifices and and you know killing children and it does and that, that stuff is real and uh, and so many uh, so many of the so-called elites are involved with all kinds of child sacrifices and pornography and 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 and, and, and uh, narcotics and drug addiction and this very slowly but surely it's beginning to circulate around the world now. So now we're finding out that, you know, the, uh, the pedophilia stuff in religion is everywhere. It's in yeah. government. It's in, uh, uh, it's in the industrial field. It's in military. It's in churches and religions and, and, and all kinds of uh, religious orders around the world. And there's all kinds of, uh, you know, in, in Islam, uh, we said before, you know, that they have child marriages and child sacrifices. So it just does. It seems it seems to be that people are being because you know, they grow up, they're born, they have no grounding whatsoever. People are being born today that have no grounding. They are shallow. 
uh, in that they have no background in education or morals or ethics or scruples or, or in humanity. They don't know anything about humanity and where we've come from. All they know is they're born and they got to eat, they got to live. And so they're out uh, chasing uh, sex and drugs, alcohol, and, and um, God knows what else, and going to uh, going to their cage fighting and their martial art fighting and boxing, and they get involved with the with the dark side of the world with fights and and art and and you know and sex and drugs and rock and roll and all the rest of it, until there seems to be a general direction now that the human family is now slowly but surely drifting into that they're not really realizing. It's just people are experiencing something they like, and they like watching the fights, they like watching the ball games, they like this and they like that, and they're having a cold beer while they're watching it. And so they don't realize that slowly but surely they are giving up their, their humanity and supporting something that's going on on the earth today that is frightening because if you look where we've come from and where we are now, it doesn't take our scientists to figure out where we're going because the people today, generally speaking, in America especially, are not grounded. There's a term that's used in electricity. People are not grounded. When I was, when I was coming up as a child, I had... My family explained to me about morals and ethics and, and the rules of life and who, how to treat other people and what to do and what not to do and what is acceptable uh, when you're playing with other kids and what is not acceptable. And if you do something wrong, you apologize for it and you don't do it ever again and you apologize. Uh, and, and you don't do this and you don't do that. But here's what you do. Uh, if you want to be a normal and good person, here are the things you have to do. You have to take a, take care of the older people and look after children and animals. And the way you treat an animal tells us about how you want how you're going to treat the rest of the world. If you treat an innocent animal, uh, we're watching you. We know what you're thinking. We know that you're brutal. And so I I was well grounded by my mom and by the people around me that, that taught me how to think and how to question and how to live and how not to live, etc., and and got me thinking about spiritual, you know, spiritual subjects. And then I began hearing uh, teachers and other people that I gravitated toward who were talking about wonderful, strange and uh, incredible subjects about the strangeness of living in the world and all the strange things that have happened in our universe and happening on our earth that we don't have any, uh, you know, any uh, answer for. That's why that book I've told you about before, and it, uh, it, it, you should get it. You could get it in any good bookstore today. You can still order it on Amazon. And if you go on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, uh, on the same line that you see my research society button that you can join, move your eyes over to the right and you will see another a little button that says recommended materials. Right. And so go on recommended materials. And one of the books right off the bat is called The Complete Works of Charles Fort, F-O-R-T. The Complete Works of Charles Fort. You can still buy it on, on Amazon or go to the bookstore and, and they have it, but it is a huge, thick book based on all of the stories that have a, that have appeared in newspapers and magazines and articles around the world of things which have happened on this earth in which there is no explanation for whatsoever, period. Things which have happened that nobody knows why they happened. Nobody can explain it. And since science cannot explain it, they don't even look at it. Why? Because if they looked at it, they'd have to explain it because they're the most brilliant people on the earth as scientists, which in point of fact, they don't know, period. They don't know what, what is going on. They have no idea in the world. All they know is that science is a religion. It's a religion that has their holy books and their holy 
uh, altars and they have their holy people, the great prophets and holy prophets in science. And so they don't need to know anything. All they need to do is keep your mouth shut. And, and if you want to get a job, then you got to get a degree. So you get Caesar to stamp your, your paper and you've got a degree now. Now you can go out and get a job. And just keep your mouth shut if you're thinking too much. And so the bottom line is that people are not aware of how this world works. So therefore the Bible says, the Bible says, God said, my people are dying from a lack of knowledge. Well, and, and that, and, and all of this is, is so interesting because, you know, one of my most recent sort of thoughts, probably one you had years ago, but, uh, as I'm looking at these people that are developing artificial intelligence, now somebody's going to mm-hmm. say, why is he bringing that up? All right. Yeah. Well, here's why, because we just talked about Satanism and we just talked about, uh, what it is that, you know, people should know is acceptable behavior and what is not. Okay. Yep. Um, I find it extremely, even more insidious than all of the ugly things we know about on the planet in the future. It feels yeah. like yep. this concept will become more insidious. Now, why do I say it? Because I'm just afraid of technology. Not at all. When I look at the statements from people who are developing this, Jordan, mm-hmm. <clears throat> they literally state, excuse me, by the way, they literally state that they're, they're basically atheists. And and look, I, I have no problem if you want to believe that you are your own God, if you want to believe that, you know, this whole existence is just a thing made up in your head, and that's fine. Yeah. I, I, I think people should be free to observe the world and interpret it any way they choose. But yeah. when I see these guys talking about, look, we're atheists, uh, you know why I don't believe in God? Because I haven't created it yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. This is a frightening notion in my mind. And and I, I can't really articulate why, but I can tell you that it sounds like the absolute most purely satanic idea in the world to lose yep. something that is exponentially more intelligent, can act quicker, can literally yep. exploit any weakness on, you know, mass populations in less than the blink of an eye. Yep. This, this idea to me is is so frightening. And the fact that these people are aware that they're creating something that would be akin to God. They don't believe there's a God now, but we're making one. That is almost the essence of what people should be afraid of with this, you know, uh, when, when it comes to, and I don't believe in fear, by the way. It's just a matter of this is You should be aware of it. Yeah, you should be aware. Yeah, I mean, what what are what are your thoughts on that? The 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 sort of spiritual implications of that. I mean, is uh, that literally like somebody ritualistically trying to use the religion of science to invoke yeah, the it, demon? It's, it's really frightening because what is what in fact is happening is that we are being stripped slowly but surely over a period of time. But we're being slowly but surely according to a method. There is an actual scientific method. That's why when you want to study world politics, it's called political science. It's not politics ideas. No, political science, because there is an actual provable science to the control of human beings and the control of people. And so this is why I said we as a human family on the earth, are slowly but surely losing our humanity. We're losing our respect for the the other world of knowledge and wisdom that has come down to us uh, and, and, and now is almost totally dead in human society. Uh, all we're doing is playing our, our, our football games on our computers and playing games and talking to each other on the telephone. There's no real interreaction. And that's why, you know, people getting married, uh, they need to go back and start thinking about you're going to, you know, you're getting married. Uh, do you know how to converse with the opposite sex? Do you know how to treat other people? If you're a man, do you know how to treat a woman and, and a child? Are you aware of how the woman thinks and, and her feelings? 
uh, no, well, you're gonna, then you're not gonna be with a woman very long. You're gonna find out that, you know, you thought you understood everything and you didn't understand this was a woman you were marrying and they don't always think like you. And so, and if you don't have respect for that, then uh, you're not gonna stay married very long. Well, same thing for women. You know, women have their own views on things. Well, do you know the way the man thinks? So you have to show respect for the male and the man. And so I'm just saying people don't show respect for each other. Why? Because they've never been trained to. They've never had any grounding. They've never had anyone teach them how to think. So they just grow up like any other animal in the street. And that's why, you know, that's why the masters who run this planet, they call all of us, we, we the people on the street, they call us chattel. Look that word up in a, in a dictionary, it's spelled C-H-A-T-T, -T, chattel. Not cattle, like a bull, but chattel. And chattel um, simply means uh, human cattle. And so the difference between cattle and humans is that humans are called chattel, and, and, and cows are called cattle. And so... This is why today we are, are on your identification, your driver's license and everything else, ID, you are either male or female. Why? Because if you went back to the United States printing office and got the book ordered from the government printing office called the Styles Magazine or the Styles Book uh, printed by the U.S. printing office, Styles Magazine is a, is a, is a large uh, magazine with words, the, all the words that are used in government, used in courts, used in, in, in business, and what those words mean in government, not what they mean on the street. You've got your own idea about what the word means on the street. But if you want to know before you go into court and before you get involved in business, get the Styles magazine, and it will show you all the words that are used in courts and in government and what they mean in the court, <clears throat> not what they mean on the street that you think. And so then you find out in the Styles magazine, it says, if you are a man or a woman, <clears throat> you have to be royalty to be a man or a woman. And only, only royalty, only the wealthy and the royalty uh, are considered by law to be a man or a woman. But the people, the common people of the world, are referred to as animals. They're called chattel. C-H-A-T-T-L. Chattel. And chattel means cattle. So that's why... If, you're, if your daughter's getting married and the young man has, comes from a wealthy family, you say, well, he, oh, he, she's getting married, but the boy she's marrying, is he's of good stock. He's of good stock. What, is she marrying a cow? No, but he's of good stock, meaning he's chattel, but they got money, so, so they are, uh, they are, you know, they're better off than we are. So we're just the common folks. And, and, but he's from good stock. So you need to understand all of your identification is in male or female. Why? Because male and female, according to Styles Magazine, published by the government, says if you're male or female, you're an animal. Well, and, and there's, there's slightly different values attributed to male and female animals, depending on what they are. For instance, you know, a breeding bull is very, very expensive, a good breeding bull. But uh, yeah. then again, you know, certain types of female cows – that are out there that produce a lot, a lot of milk, those are very expensive, right? Uh, That's some, right. some types of cows don't necessarily do the same thing. Not every well, bull is a great breeding stock. Yeah, See, yeah, there, there's well, your yeah. good stock versus, <laughs> right, the rest. Now, we, yeah. got a, we got a couple of questions that came in. And yeah. uh, so I want to I wanna enter them in here before we run out of time. Um, uh, that, uh, one other thing I want to say is that that's why you are on the stock market. Exactly. Because that's all you are is cattle. You're on the stock market. And Go on. What were you saying? Yeah, believe it or not, if you find out about your, you know, social security, your your government serial number, you, you can find out that there's actually a stock market value to that. But anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> another thing you can study in the Research Society at JordanMaxwellShow.com. Um, all right. 
so here's the two questions. Uh, well, let's, let's, uh, we, we got another Satanism question and we have one on, uh, recent events. I'll go with the recent events question first. Um, because of the increase in bad weather, earthquakes, tsunamis, um, I'm not sure what this word is, but I'm, I'm guessing this is all natural disasters because of the increases of natural disasters and floods and things like this. Does it appear as though this is part of the biblical text or is this simply mankind wrecking the planet? That's this is mankind it. wrecking the planet. This is called, uh, weather modification. That's a whole story that, that, that most people have never heard. I've sat and talked with scientists and physicists that work for the U.S. government and NASA, and in private conversations, I've sat and talked with them about what is going on with the weather of this world. And they tell me that there's something called ELF, extreme low frequency, ELF. And, and uh, I can quickly just tell you that off the coast of the United States in, in, in Alaska, off the coast of Alaska going uh, eastward toward Russia, there's a series of, of islands called the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska. And on that last little island on the American side, uh, there's also a series of little islands off the coast of, of uh, Russia in the same area. And they, and they have little islands going toward America. And on the last island, I am told, on the last island on the Russian side, is <clears throat> they, uh, Russia has put a gigantic uh, atomic uh, power plant on that little island that's closest to America. Uh, that little island has a has a big power plant, a uh, nuclear power plant. And why? Well, because they've got a station, some kind of an electrical radio or some kind of a station out there. But it uses so much electricity, they have to generate their own nuclear power to even run this station on that little island. And what it is on that station, we now know that there are like two large discs, uh, you know, those, those, uh, those discs that we see in, in Goldstone, Arizona and that kind of thing. Well, these are two large discs and, uh, and, and one of them, they're like plates of big ones. And, and so they're connected to a computer. And so, if Russia wants to cause trouble somewhere, they want to cause any kind of terrible weather, they direct uh, one of those disks and put it into the computer, uh, and then they put it uh, the same thing into the other computer, and, it, and the other disk turns the opposite way. Uh, one is going northward, and one's going eastward. And now when they when they jack up the power and they're sending out an electrical signal, which is extremely powerful uh, because they have to have a nuclear plant to just pump the, the electricity into this thing. One of those disks are sending out a powerful electrical signal north going around the world. It will go around the earth and come right back where it's you know because it's going one straight line. But the other one that's pointing east or west, uh, it has to be east or west, They in that, that one sends out a signal, and it goes around the world and comes back. But where the two signals cross uh, is in the computer, and wherever it crosses, now once they cross, you can, it's now called ELF, extreme low frequency. Now you can manipulate the power going into both of those, uh, both of those lines of power going around the world and they connect somewhere on the earth on the other side of the earth. And so where they connect, you can now cause a volcano to erupt. You can cause an earthquake. You can cause a, 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 a hurricanes or tornadoes. And depending on how much power you pump into it, and where you are designing that cross point with the two things that are going to cross on the other side of the world, you figure out where it is and what the weather's like, and now you can cause the rains to come and flood 
Or if it's a rainy area and, and, and a jungle, you could cause uh, no rain to fall at all, period. And you go for droughts. Uh, and so it's called ELF. And it's a it's fascinating story about how Russia controls the weather. Well, we know we're doing the same thing. We call it HARP, and we've got ELF frequencies also. We're using it militarily, just like Russians are. But the bottom line is, to so the answer to the question, yes, we are causing most of these uh, uh, terrible things that are happening on the earth. That's between Russia and us. We're hurting them. They're hurting us. We hurt their friends, and they hurt our friends. And we cause uh, earthquakes and volcanoes. Well, they're doing the same thing. And so the, the, all of these things we're seeing happening, yeah, we are causing, we humans. We're, we're, we're great at science. We love science. We don't care about life. So, so it's, it's called weather. ELF. Yep. Go back and just research ELF. ELF. Extreme low frequency. And, and it's, it's basically weather warfare between That's whoever and whoever. I mean, it really is irrelevant when it's being done on such a mass scale. Who's doing it? It's just uh, the fact that it is human driven. Okay. So there's the answer to that question. Hopefully that works for you. Now, the other one is again about Satanism. Um, now, this is, uh, I'm just going to read it as, as written. Uh, is, okay. is Satanism compatible slash interconnected with Nazism and or communism since the world appears to have been using those three belief systems to land us in so much trouble? Question mark. That's exactly the way it's written, Jordan. Yeah, and I think there is something to that that uh, no matter what kind of Satanism you are looking at, no matter what what's, uh, school of thought <clears throat> you're dealing with, you're dealing with something which uh, you're dealing with something that you don't have any control over. And that's why I tell people don't, don't deal with uh, spiritual subjects that where you you actually contact the spirits, like with an Ouija board. That's the one thing I would stay as far away from as you can possibly get as an Ouija board, because what you're doing is you are actually, in point of fact, communicating with the spirit world, and it does work. You can bet it works. It's called an Ouija board, and you ask it questions, and it will answer you. And it's an intelligent answer, so you know you're connecting you know, with something on the other side. Well, I think you have to be out of your you have to be out of your mind to do anything like that, because it's obviously intelligent. It's not of this world, and you're talking to it. Well, you don't know what you're talking to. Parents tell their children, you know, don't go talking to strangers and watch out uh, with the with people around you and the strangers around you. Why? Because you don't know what they're like and who they really are. Well, the same thing on a Ouija board and, and with with humans uh, dealing with spiritism, spirit subjects like demonism, devil worship, child sacrifice, <clears throat> our, our devil worship. There is a world of spiritual presence on this earth that we humans are not aware of. Uh, you know, churches talk about demons and devil worship and spirits and poltergeists and ghosts and, and sons of God and, and, and the and the Islamic people talk about jinns, which are spiritual entities, demons and devils or spirits, angels. Mm. Uh, you know, of course, if we have good and bad angels. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I don't know the difference, so I don't want to deal with any angel because I don't know the difference. Well, but the, the truth so, about all of this, Jordan, in reality, though, is that most of the people that uh, spend a lot of time speaking about this know absolutely nothing absolutely. about what they're speaking about. I mean, literally, uh, you know, to, correct me if I'm wrong, but I hear these guys from the pulpit talking about, you know, oh, well, you know. There's a, there's a devil that makes you want to do this, and there's, you know, a great spirit that makes you want to... These people have no clue about the fact right. that there are entities who don't care about any of, you know, your little trials and tribulations in life. Now, they may wish to consume life, but to them, you're nothing but food. 
Okay. Of course. There, there's all sorts of orders of different things that are out there. And just like with the Ouija board, I mean, it's a toy, <clears throat> you know, uh, it's more, more famously a toy. But the thing is that people make these broad sweeping statements about things that they have no knowledge of, no experience with, and absolutely no connection to. They're telling you their ideas. And actually, they're not even their ideas. They are just a manipulated, mangled version of what it is they were told to say. And absolutely. that's what kills me. I mean, but but again, I mean, Jordan, maybe I'm wrong. Tell me. Am I wrong? No, no, no. This is exactly right. They went to college. Uh, if you're going to be a minister and you're going to be a, a minister in a church, you've got to get a degree. So you've got to go to a Christian university. Get a degree in theology. And they're, and they're going to and they're going to ask you all the questions. You've got to answer the questions. If you get an A, and and so it's like anything else. You go to school, and uh, and 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 you will learn what they tell you to learn, and you will recite what they tell you to recite. And if you're a good boy, and you and you learn what the teacher wants you to say, and what the book tells you to think and say, then we'll get an A. And that way, when you go up, you can go to college now, and they will give you a degree, and you can get a good job. Why? Because you now know what to kiss and when and what to say. And, uh, and and how to view things correctly the way the boss wants you to think. And so if you're like me, uh, you grow up as a child deciding, I don't want to hear anything from any expert. I want to look at it myself. I'm not stupid. I want to read it myself. And I start asking questions about things that most adults have never even thought of. And so that's been my life. Ask questions about things that most adults don't even know exist. And then the more, the more I looked at religion, because that was my favorite subject as a child, and still my favorite subject today, theology and religion. I'm not anti-God. I'm not anti-religious. But what I am is I'm trying to tell you that what you are believing today uh, is based on things that you don't even know exist. They're based on ideas that existed in the ancient Egyptian world that today you believe as, as, as part of your religious belief, and you have no idea in the world where that belief came from and what it meant back then, 5,000 years ago, as opposed to what it means today. And, and and so that's why we have so much chaos and people turning to drugs and alcoholism and, and, and all the violence of wars and all the stuff that the humans are involved in today. Everywhere you look is, is cage fighting and football and fights and, and you know heavyweight championships and everything is fighting and drinking and alcoholism and drug addiction and wars and military. The whole human race is being sucked into a destiny that they have no idea where they've come from, where they are now, and how this stuff is working, and where they're getting ready to go. And I've see, known this for years. I've see, known all about it. I've been talking to all the experts in military and astronauts and scientists and Jesuit historians and Jesuit theologians, and I know what's going on. I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything, but at least I have had the opportunity to use my own mind all of my life, and I've spent my all my time in my life researching and studying the world I live in, where it came from, what it means, and where we're going. This is why the more I see this stuff, and I've seen it for 60 years, I am so incredibly moved emotionally moved by what I see coming. I see that children on the streets have no idea in the world how they got here, what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to live. You know, I, I see mothers with, with six or eight kids and they're pregnant and, and their husband's gone and so they're on television saying, well, who's going to feed my babies? Who's going to feed my babies? i got 14 kids here. And I've got six husbands, and they're all gone. And so who's going to feed my babies? Well, we'll feed them. We'll, we'll take care of them. Well, then, then what you're doing is opening up the world to the whole idea of socialism, Marxist, Leninist, communism, where the state will take care of everything. 
They'll feed you and take care of you. And yeah, well, they were doing just fine, but nobody seems to know the history of the World Communist Party back in the 30s when it was founded in the, in the Soviet Union. Nobody seems to realize that Russia grew to be a mighty military power under the world communist regime and under communism. It became known as the Soviet Empire, the Soviet communism. But nobody seems to realize where did the Soviets get the money to feed their troops and to feed their people and to pay their military. They got paychecks every week. Where did they get the money? Well, they got the money from the Federal Reserve. With the Federal Reserve used to send the plates that they used to print money. I've read articles many years ago that you would never read today, but in the research magazines and books many years ago explained and showed how the Federal Reserve sent the plates. They made duplicate plates of the fives and tens and twenties and hundred dollar bills and wrapped those plates up and sent them to the uh, to the Soviet Union so that the Communist Party in the Soviet Union could run off and they would and, and the and the and the paper the particular paper it was on had to be produced and then sent to Europe and from Europe it would go to Germany and from Germany it would go into the Soviet Union the paper and so that the that the Soviet Union could print the money to feed their children, buy the guns, and feed their armies, and feed everybody, and, and, and make sure everybody gets paid so that the Soviet Union could grow and become a great enemy. How? Off of the Federal Reserve plates that was sent to the, the communists by our great American heroes who run the Federal Reserve and finance Adolf Hitler the same way. They financed the Communist Party the same way, and now they're financing the destruction of the United States of America. Why? Because they could just print the money as much as you want. We'll just print this stuff. We'll put three, three ships, three different ships, morning, noon, and night, and just run off the paper money and send it everywhere, or send it to Russia, so they'll have plenty of money to buy guns and and, and, and start a war, we'll send a lot of it to uh, to South Africa, to Nelson Mandela, so he can foment revolutions and pay the blacks to kill whites. And so we'll just finance all this chaos and lies and deception and wars. The Federal Reserve is financing the world's demise. And we are so ignorant and ill-informed, we don't read, so we just don't know. But one day we're going to wake up and find out somebody has been planning your demise for a long time. And this is what I'm trying to do with my research website is to show you all these documents and tell you things about the world you live in you've never heard before. So you wonder how we got in the mess we got? It's because there is somebody who's put us into this mess and we don't even begin to know who well, finance the Soviet Union's own country. Well, you know, you know, you know what the other problem is, though, Jordan, and and, and I, I got to be honest here. I always hate it when I only hear about the overlords, so to yep. speak, that yep. do this to us, right? Because yep. we bear responsibility as well. Now, why do I say that? Because we feed into this system by insisting that tribalism is the important thing. No. Yeah. Yes. Why, why, why do I say that? Okay, because here, here, here's the, the, the quick, you know, bullet point logic. What happens is they tell you you have to believe in a certain whatever, red tie, blue tie, right, GOP, uh, liberal, whatever. They tell you that's your team. And then they present you with the tribe leader of said team, mm -hmm. right? Then yep. they tell you that – Somehow God has chosen them, or they are here as an instrument of God. Yeah. And, you know, th this theme reoccurs and reoccurs, and it's all about the tribalism. It doesn't even matter the details that are there with the leader or with the yep. God. You don't even necessarily have to know which God it is, and that's the confusion that we're working through during this series. But yep. here's the problem. Uh, the grand leader, too. 
somebody who's ascended to power. Why? He was chosen. Why was he chosen? Well, he was chosen by all of you. Not really. What has happened, though, is that regardless of what they put up, people join a team. You see, they, they just simply put out the team and say, join us. Become part of the people that wear the red hats. Become part mm-hmm. of the people that are wearing the blue shirts. Become part mm-hmm. of the people that are out there with this kind of sign. <clears throat> and people fall right into line, behaving much like the chattel that, that they're described as. Yep. This is our responsibility to not always go with the crowd. Now, look, when you see a crowd of people running away from something loud, it's good to follow a crowd because that's usually a good idea. But, um, you know, when you see them running straight into their own demise ignorantly, not even fully understanding the agendas of the individuals who have been placed in front of them, the system that is working, that they believe is going to work for them because of grand leader or because of the person they selected to office somehow, this is the problem. You're not going to be saved by somebody you saw on TV. You got it? So that's the bottom line with all of this, as far as I'm concerned, it's not about, well, gee, you guys are challenging my beliefs. And God. I'm not challenging your belief. You can believe anything you want, but look at the reality of what that actually is. Not the, not, not, not that facade, not the soffit over top of the uh, windows, but look inside. And figure yep. out where it really came from, what it actually means, what these rituals actually stand for, what yep. they're actually telling you when they're telling you fall into line. This yep. is the problem. Anyway, play ball. Play, play ball. ball. You're stand team, on your line. You're, there's a team here in this company, and you're not on the team. You got it. And I said, you bet your ass I'm not on the team, son. <laughs> don't try it. Don't try and BS me. I'm not on your team. I can read and write and think before I, you know, before I came here, I was already well aware of commercialism and how the world works and where the religions have come from and who owns the banks and uh, how the whole world works. That's all I've done for all my life is study exactly. the dark side of the human race and what we're doing. That's why I want people to understand to go on my website, the Jordan Maxwell show and always add the word show because that's my only website is Jordan Maxwell show. And you will see a button right there, a little banner that says research society website, click on it and join because you're going to see, I've got a massive website of all the documents, audios, and, and audio lectures, uh, massive research papers on all the dark stuff going on on the belly of civilization, all the real tricks and lies and deception. And that's what I've been doing all my life. And the reason why I do it is because I think the human family needs to wake up and, and educate itself as to what's really going on here. And that's why I want to give them an opportunity to have a place to start. You want to find out what the world's really like? Yeah, go on my website and join my research society. And then also get the two videos that are on my home page on the right-hand side on the home page of my two new videos. You get those and watch those, and, and you can download it and watch it immediately. Watch my two videos, and you will be uh, astounded. At what you never saw before, what, how this world is put together and how it works. And they were never told you. You've never been told these things I'm trying to show you. I'm not against anything. I do believe in God, but I don't want people being misled any longer. Well, so it, that's what I do. Exactly. In that way, Jordan, you're kind of against one thing, and that is ignorance. Uh, you know, that that is the one thing that I would prefer. Listen, again. As I said, I, I, I personally do, have no objection to someone believing anything they wish, so long as they're not harming others with that belief. And no, that's I what the problem fail. is, right? Because people that are misled and misdirected can very easily wind up harming people, even when they don't necessarily mean to, because they're misinformed. That's right. And it's just that simple. Now, believe it or not, we've run through two hours here with Jordan. <laughs> So episode 11 is done, basically. I'm going to give Jordan the final word, but 
of course, uh, I urge you guys to go over to jordanmaxwellshow.com. That is the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's. I go over there. I am in the Research Society. I go into that section. Uh, you want to study up more on what we've talked about for the most part during these two hours and these 11 episodes, there is a, uh, a, a tab in there under religion. And you can just begin there with the images and some of the uh, interesting exhibits that are there to explain not only what we've gone over, but a lot more. Okay, yep. so that's in the Research Society, but it all starts at jordanmaxwellshow.com. you got to put all that together because that is the only website that is actually Jordan Maxwell's. Okay, Jordan, uh, what would you uh, like to say kind of in closing tonight? Well, in closing, I want people to know I'm not anti-religious. I'm not anti-God. I'm not anti-anything. Uh, I'm, I'm 78 years old, and I've been a teacher all of my life, and I'm fascinated with wisdom, and I want people to know how the world works and what's going on to help them to grow and educate themselves. And so, uh, but go on my website, The Jordan Maxwell Show, and you'll see two videos on the right-hand side of the screen. Click on them and watch them. You can download and watch them now. You will find stuff in those two videos you have never heard of before that are startling stuff. And then go join my research society because there's a lot there and there's a lot more coming. Well, so absolutely. I appreciate I appreciate you letting me uh, talk about these things because it's I want people to know I'm not anti anything. I just want to educate my fellow man before I leave this world. Absolutely. And look, like I said, you know, the one thing that is paramount here, I, I do think you are anti-ignorance, though. 